Hello everyone, welcome to another Rick's Picks. Today I'm going to be doing my review of the Masters of the Universe Origins playset, Snake Mountain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at it in packaging, then I'm going to take a look at the playset's assembly, then all the accessories in the, you know, playset itself, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on it. And just remember, if you do like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, share, and subscribe. They're small clicks for you. But it really helps this channel grow. So, without any further ado, let's get to the review. Alright, so here's Snake Mountain in packaging. I love the box art for this. I really do. I think this looks really nice. you got the Masters of the Universe logo here. Snake Mountain. Alright, you have a nice picture of Snake Mountain with the heroes, the villains. You even have the Snake Men over here. So you got a lot going on in this picture, and I really love this. All right. Comes unassembled by Mattel, new for 23. And up here you have your age restriction. All right, so let's give this thing a spin. All right. So now you have this side where you have the Masters of the Universe logo. You have the talent here. You look, I don't know what these are. They look like ghost versions of the Snake Man. That looks pretty interesting. I like that art. All right, spin it around this way. Get a good look at the play set. You get a look at the back of it, some of the uh, stuff that it comes with. You get a really nice look at the Snake Mountain play set. Uh, you have your different heroes coming at it, your villains. You also have the Snake Men on this side and vehicle. Now, the neat thing about this is what I really like about this is with each of your figures... It actually tells you who each figure is. So it isn't just a picture of like the figures. You know, it tells you like this is Moss Man. This is the Rotor. You got King His. You know, Skeletor, He-Man and so forth. So I really like that they added that to it. To where it tells you what each individual is. You got the Masters of the Universe here. Snake Mountain. Mattel. Alright. Open. Spin it around this way. Alright. You get the Masters of the Universe logo. Snake Man. Now, here is something neat. You got one of the old Horde ships. All right? So, I'm wondering if they're bringing that into the actual, you know, universe. Like, if they're going to be making a play set for this. Because usually with these Masters of the Universe play sets and figures, they show hints of further projects. So, I think it's kind of neat that they show that. So, I want to see what that's about. All right? Actually, I don't think that's the Horde. No, I think that's Skeletor's, if I remember right. Yeah, I think that's Skeletor's ship, not, ship, not the Horde. So, all right. So, we look, turn it around this way. All right. You get a lot of goodness here. So, it shows you all the different play features. So, you got the snake. You have the bridge. All right, you have the gate that you can fall through. The moat. You got the secret passage. The chains. And you also got a throne for Skeletor. So, this is looking really cool. All right, at the bottom, you got the Masters of the Universe logo. Another picture of the set. Some legal. So, with all that being said, let's open it up and see what it's about. All right, now this does need some assembling, okay? So, first off, let's spin it around this way. All right, open her up. So the first part that they tell you to put on is this set up here, all right? So this is actually going to just hook right into here. Let's move our camera up so you can see it, all right? So this just slides and hooks into here. in like that there's little clips here that it fits into so if you take a look here you get this little clip it just snaps in on each side and now that is on all right so now you have the gates all right all right next part is the bridge so here's your bridge here you got a couple rails for it and that comes in four pieces, 
All right. Let's push this to the back a little bit here. So you got one, two, three, and four. Doesn't specify which ones go where. I think they're they're all basically the same. And they just clip in. All right. Honestly, this goes this way, I guess. All right. There it goes. So they just pop in like that. Back one here. All right. And then that one goes here. All right. So the bridge goes together pretty well. And it just clips in here. All right. That clips in. And that clips in. So now you got your bridge right here. All right. Part two. Actually. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. So now you have to spin it around this way. All right. For some more assembly. So next would be the snake. All right. So here's the snake. And we'll get into play features and all. You know, later on. Right now, we're just doing assembly. All right, so he clips into here. Now, with this, you got a square with a little nub. So when you look at the snake, you get this little nub here. So that indicates that this is the bottom. All right. So he just clips in like that. Goes on pretty easy, pretty well. All right. There we go. So now the snake is on. All right, they say there's no further assembly. That's that's it. All right, next, you have this here, this setup. All right, that will be going on here. They got little clips for it. Make sure I'm doing, oops. I think it goes this way, yes. All right, so this slides in like that. So that will be the base for outside the gate and also here, all right? Next up, you have this side. All right. So you have this floor here. All right. And this goes right in here. Let's move it over so you can see me pop it in. And it all just clips in really nice. All right. You also have his throne. All right. So that's Skeletor's throne. They got a spot right here for it. That could just go in that little hole. So now his chair can actually sit on the upper level, which is really nice. All right. You have your wolf head. All right. That gets assembled up into here. See how it sits in there. It shows that there's a little piece here or something. All right. Yes, there is. I guess he just... Oh, I see. Okay. So these little bars here go into these two spots there. And he just slides right in. All right. Oops. Let's see that a little bit better. So, yeah, these two bars slides in and out of that. And there's no issues with that. All right. There we go. All right. After that, you have... Your cage, all right? So you have a prison here, which is really nice. Just folds around. You get these two pieces that hook into here. All right? Clips together just like that. You have a floor for it. All right? So this should just clip in. All right. There we go. So the floor clips in really nice. No issues with that going together. And then you have this one here. This way, I guess. Okay, 
So there it goes. All right. All right. So that sits in just like that. You can slide it into this little spot here. Is where they suggest putting it. All right. And it just locks into place. in there also well though because what it is is you got a couple little clips so so we'll just have that sit like that for now but what it looks like is there's little spots hooks here that this is supposed to clip into <clears throat> it's just a little bit difficult to get in there you know, but, oh, I see how it goes. Okay, so what it is is there's a rail here on either side, and these little hooks. If you look under here, you can see these little hooks. So this just slides right into those two hooks. Tighten that back down. Cage is coming apart. There it goes. So you just slide right in there. <clears throat> there we go. A little bit of a pain to get in there. goes all right once you line those that up it just slides right in all right so i don't really think you would need to keep it in there just because of the fact that it kind of hovers you may be better not to slide it in there and just sit it in you can do that as well but that's how it's supposed to be assembled in there all right so now our castle gray skull i mean not castle gray skull Sorry. Our Snake Mountain is completely assembled. So the next thing we're going to do is take a really good look at this thing. All right, so here it is, completely assembled. We got a lot of really cool stuff going on with this, all right? So first off, the two figures we're going to be using for this video is Skeletor, Battle Armor, and Battle Armor He-Man, all right? So first off, Let's get Skeletor into position. So, there is a foot peg right here. Let me move the snake out of the way. All right. That just hooks him on. So, you can actually have him posing there, which is nice. You can have him with, you know, staff up in the air. You can get him posed really nicely in there. I really like that. All right. Move him. This gate opens and shuts, all right? So that's a nice play feature. Now, all along the steps here, you got foot pegs. So I really like that. So that way you can pose any of your figures however you want. So if you want He-Man here coming on up, you know, like this. You know, you can get that foot peg in there. And you can, you know, set him up however you want, coming up the steps or however, and it's all throughout. So you have, you know, some across the bridge, you got spot here, you know. So I really like that they added that. So that's a neat piece. So you could get your figures displayed wherever you want on this thing because they got the pegs for it. All right. Move Skeletor, move He-Man, this, all right. You got this door well here. You get this kind of funky root thing going on here, all right, which is like a rubber plastic. So I guess you can, you know, sort of have figures, you know, come through here, you know, in and out. It's probably meant to be like a secret passage in. Uh, the original playset did have this as well, but it didn't have the rubber to it. So you get 
all these neat faces. And this is one of the things I loved about the Snake Mountain playset when I was a kid was you had all these weird faces and monsters and stuff ingrained into the mountain itself. Gave it a really eerie, scary look to it. Now, of course, move him out of the way just a little bit more. They incorporated the top of the mountain, which I think is really neat. Sort of an homage to the old cartoon. You know how Snake Mountain kind of came to a peak that the snake wrapped around. So I think that was a really cool piece of detail that they added to this. All right, now you got the snake. As you can see, it can move up and down here. There is movement to the head and jaw. All right, so this is on a ball joint. You got the jaw movement. So that's really cool. So you can have it attacking like He-Man or something. You can actually have him like stuck in its jaws or something like that. Oops. Little square peg that it sits in. All right. So once again, get good old He-Man in here. All right. So as you see, this can hold a figure really nice. So you could do some really cool stuff with this. Now, the one thing I would have liked to have seen done with this snake is I would have liked to have seen the eyes colored in. I think it would look really cool if you had a really cool painted in eye to give it like an evil snake look. You know, I would have liked to have seen that personally, but that's just me. So that's all the movement parts of the snake. All right. And the roots. So that's the front part of this. Now, spin it around here. Now we're looking at this side, all right? So first off, you got your wolf head that spins. Now with the original play set, there was actually a microphone in here. So you could actually pull the wolf head off and talk into it and you get this supposedly eerie snake mountain voice. Uh, the jaw moves here, just like the original one. There's nothing really big to it. It's just a simple lever, all right? And then of course you have the chains. Now, this is interesting. They made these out of a soft rubber, all right? So these are made out of a soft rubber, okay? So it makes them flexible, and it also makes it harder to break them. I like the idea to this, because the original Stink Mountain had, like, hard plastic chains, and one thing I noticed about some of these hard plastic chains is they break easily. So with this being a soft plastic, that's really nice, so... Now, the other thing to it is there's no clamping mechanism to this. So what you have to do is you actually got to pull off He-Man's hand to get the chain on there and then pop it back on. So that's pretty cool. So for him to actually have this on, it almost feels like he's really chained in there. You know, like he can't slip out of it because the only way you're getting these chains on him, let's pop the other hand off. is to actually take his hands off. So, get that back on him. So when He-Man's chained in here, he's chained. You know, he he's not escaping that without breaking the chains off. So, I think that's a really neat touch that the only way you could get the hand, hands in and out of there is if you take the hands off. So, you got the rest of your bridge layout here. You got some more detailing. You have the bird head, which is now iconic to the Snake Mountain playset. So I'm liking what they did with the outside of this. I think this is really cool. It captures the original look while also adding in some neat details as well. Now, the one thing I noticed about Snake Mountain and Castle Grayskull for this line is it's kind of an in-between of the original playset and then the later playset that came out for the Classics line which was done by the Four Horsemen, which were these huge, elaborate, really nice-looking ones, extremely expensive. So this kind of reminds... So this is kind of an in-between. The same with the uh, Castle Grayskull. It's kind of an in-between. It's not as big, elaborate, and detailed as the Classics one, but it's a lot more detailed than the original set. So that's what I kind of like about this. It's that in-between with a good price point for collectors. All right, so let's take a look at the back side of this. So this is really nice, all right? So first off, you have Skeletor's chair here. 
Now this can swivel a little bit in here and it's removable, okay? So you also have this nice display screen in the original one, I think it was, no, it was plastic because the, um, in the original one, this was your battery pack and controls for the headpiece. All right, so you had your speaker in here, your battery and your sound effects. All right, so the chair is movable. So let's see how well our Skeletor sits in his throne. All right, got a little bit damaged there. So lift his legs up. All right. So seems to sit okay in it. I think they should have probably made it just a little bit bigger. Let's see how well he sits up here. All right. Get back on its little thing here. All right. So he kind of sits in it not really well. All right. And that's probably because this piece is a little bit in the way here, the head piece. I'll show that a little bit closer in a minute. Let me try to get him to sit in here a little bit better. If he sits off to the side, he seems to fit in it a little bit better. All right. So he does seem to sit in it. You just have to have him cocked off to the side a little bit. Because, let me show you on here. Because what it is, is his headpiece here kind of interferes with the way he sits on there. This was like maybe out just a hair more. He'd probably sit in it a little bit better, but... Get him cocked off to the side of it, all right? As you can see, he sits in it a little bit better. So it kind of looks like he has two heads, but if he's off to the side, he sits pretty well in it, all right? Now, next off, you have your cage here. Now, as you see, as I showed in the assembly, this just slides on, and it can slide right out of there. You know, you don't even have to put it on those rails. It'll, it'll just sit in here, you know, even without them. So, you know... Either way, how you feel comfortable doing it. All right. So on the bottom here, you have that decal there. All right. Which is similar to the original one where you have the trap door, the lizards, bones, and what have you. All right. Right here is the control for the mouth that we saw earlier. All right. Now, here's, here's, a, cool, here's a cool thing. This is something I really like that they did this. I kind of wish they did something similar with Gray Skull. All right. So this side, all right, you got this little trap door. This opens up and you have your moat here. All right. See the moat? Now the moat comes with pegs. All right. So you get like these little creatures here. Let's, let's give you a good look at this one. All right. And they could go on different spots in here because they got a little peg hole here. So they can fit on different spots. You have this headpiece here. All right. And he can fit on there. Now, originally, this was just a sticker. You know, just like the, um, you know, the uh, print, the cell prison in uh, Grayskull was it where it's just a sticker. This was just a sticker, but they went out of the way and made this unique. And now, what you can also do is you can take your figure, because these figures are meant to be taken apart, and you can actually put them in there like this. All right? So this way, now you can make it look like your He-Man is stuck in, in the drink. All right? So you can have him, like, sinking in there, which is a really neat effect. I love that. You know, I love the way how they did this. You know, they really put some thought into this play, I think. You know, so you can have him stuck in a drink. Now, they do have it so... Let's move He-Man out of here. He's on there pretty tight. Ah, there we go. Put him back up here. Now, they also do have the play feature here. Where you're standing on there. Push the button. And they fall through the gate. Now, originally, with the original... Um, snake mount. It had a net that sat here. And, you know, nobody really liked the net. You know, it was kind of wonky. Alright. But with this one, the cage actually slides up into here. So you got the same rails here like you do over here. So. Alright. 
little bit of a challenge to line this up. But once you got it lined up, as you see, it sits nicely there. So you get good old He-Man. Oops, I might have accidentally triggered this. Hold up. There we go. Got to get this into place. Perfect. But once again, get good old He-Man here. Have him stand on there. And what it seems like is it hits against something. It's hitting against something. All right, maybe the cage ain't back far enough. All right, there you go. All right, so with the cage, you have to have this back far enough. Otherwise, it won't work. So now, let's try He-Man again here. There. Now he's in the prison. All right, and then the prison can be transferred over to where it normally sits, except you got to move the gate. All right, so you actually have to pull He-Man out, put the gate back up, and then you can move it. And put good old He-Man back in here. So now he's stuck in the gate. I mean the cage, all right? Cage does open. All right. But me personally, I like the cage over here. And I think I'd rather him just fall into the drink. You know, just have that open up. <coughs> He-Man goes into the swamp, the end of He-Man. But that'd be my play, all right? <coughs> Excuse me. Now it comes with some other things. So it comes with this spider here. That's meant to hook up right here. Alright. Looks like one of Webster's little buddies. Alright. So you got this spider that can hook up here. You can, you know, if you're playing with it, you could have it come down and attack, you know, whoever's trying to get into uh, Snake Mountain and what have you. So I think that's a really neat extra piece that they added to it. Alright. It does come with a weapon rack. All right. Oops. All right, and a couple of weapons. So it comes with a spear. That just hooks right on here. No issues. A little sword. All right. It just pops in here. Somehow. There it goes. And a shield. Don't you know what? Shield over here. All right. Sword actually has to come up this way because if you point it down, it won't work. So let's get a nice, good close up look at this. All right. And then Skeletor with the throne. Right, so let's put that up there. So there's a lot of really cool things going on with this that I really like about this play set. So overall, I would highly recommend this. You know, there's a lot of really neat stuff, and this can go anywhere on there that you want it. Now, these weapons are the same color as the Skeletal Warriors, too, which is really nice. So you can actually, you know, swap these out with the Skeletal Warriors. So... There's a lot of really cool things with this. Alright, so here's the beginning of the tour of Snake Mountain. This is our close-up of it. So you got He-Man stuck here on the chains. Got the bird face in the front. The wolf head. Alright, and you follow along the path. To where you come up the steps. Where Skeletor is now greeting you. Alright. And then you got the snake. So this is our close up look. Alright. Let's look through the woods here. Alright. I figured we'd do a close up. Just because of the fact that this thing is so massive. And there's so much going on with it. I think it really deserved a good close look. So now that we looked at the outside up close. Let's look at the inside as well. Alright, so this thing is so big, we're going to do a quick walkthrough tour of both the back and the front. Alright, so you got the spider up there, you got your gate with your trap door, come down your ladder. I didn't show the ladder um, when I was originally going through it, but all it does is hook into the side. Alright, you got He-Man stuck here in the swamp, the critter's getting ready to have a He-Man lunch. 
All right, you got your weapon rack here. You got your prison cage. All right, you got this display floor here. Skeletor at his throne. And then you got the back of the wolf head. All right, so there's one final feature I didn't get into yet with this. All right, try to get that nice and straight for you guys is that it does close up. Now, just like the original Snake Mountain, you know, the bridge usually comes off to close it, or you can just move it off to the side. She folds up. All right. You got two hinges over here. Now, what you're gonna have to do before you completely close this up is you are gonna have to remove the throne, all right? So that's gonna have to come maybe down here or something to store it in there. All right, so it could close off. And then cage. Uh, cage ain't working well with it as well. Might have to actually put it up on this rack. Closer. All right. Let's see what all that, that does. Yep. So these old latches hook on. And now Snake Mountain's closed and ready to be transported. So overall, I really do love this play set. I think they put a lot of good work into this. They took their time with it. There's things on here that I would have liked to have seen on Castle Grey Skull that would have been neat. Like if they would have did a little bit more of the Castle Grey Skull trap door setup. Like they did this. I love how they did the swamp. The swamp was really cool. I love that. Uh, a lot of things are really cool. Probably my biggest pet peeve with this is the snake. I wish the eye would have been painted in. And it isn't in here too tight. You move this snake around a little bit and it's going to pop off. All right. But other than that, I have no real issues with this play set. I definitely think if you're a Masters of the Universe fan and you love Snake Mountain and you love Skeletor, this is a must have for your collection. I think this set is about as important as Gray Skull itself. They did a lot of really cool things with it. I really like this, and I would highly recommend this playset. So with that being said, I hope you guys did like this review. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, share, and subscribe. There's small clicks for you, but it really helps this channel grow. So until the next one, late.